Good All and right. We are live. Welcome back. It's live at Epifan. Mm -hmm. Today is Thursday. It's 3 o'clock. It is. Whoa, live at Epifan. Look Whoa, at that. 3D. Let me put my 3D, 3D. specs on. Okay. Gotta, like, get those uh, off. Now, how do we get still, the title back off of there? Yeah, oh, still, there we go. We're still short of <laughs> jingle, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so this is episode 106. That's right. Uh, we have an interesting topic today that uh, I think a lot of people will be interested in. Um, talking about monetization on live streaming and uh, looking at some of the examples from some of the popular platforms you might want to do that with. Totally. So um, it's the future of so live streaming. Uh, spoiler alert, the new boss is the same as the old boss. Is that the oh, expression, okay. right? But we'll get into that more a little bit yeah, later. Okay. Uh, my name is Cameron. <laughs> I'm a uh, video producer here, and this is my uh, partner in crime, George. Yeah. It's part and of our I am uh, team. not a video producer. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just a pretty face that we put in front of the camera. <laughs> Not that either. Uh, but we got a bunch of people in chat, of course. And uh, so I'm looking at some names in here. Uh, Tim Trot Productions uh, saying hello. Hello. Kevin hey, probably still owes you an email, Tim. No, no, I connected with Tim. Uh, we're actually going uh, to touch base with Tim when we get back after NAB in a couple of weeks. But I look forward to chatting with Tim, seeing how we can have him on the show. Uh, Tim actually has a lot of experience with broadcast. So cool. he started... Um, he started up a while back, took a little break, and now he's back in the game again. So we will, um, we will definitely have him on the show so that we can talk to him about his experience awesome. and stuff. We have Steven uh, saying uh, good afternoon from Minneapolis. We have uh, D. Scott saying hello. David Larson photo. Uh, we I are Steve has like a, live. He must have a blue avatar because that one <laughs> just like disappeared on there. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Elijah Hansen, uh, good evening from Ghana. Cool. Oh, Ghana. Very cool. Uh, <laughs> and uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Fist asks, wow, your chin looks 20 years younger. I'm just going to assume <laughs> you're talking about Cameron because uh, I don't know what you're referring to. Uh, <laughs> uh, it does look like he's lost weight. Okay, right? Giving us the thumbs up, thumbs up. <laughs> he's not going uh, to. And uh, my sister making fun of me. We'll just ignore her. <laughs> and uh, David saying uh, hello uh, to people as well. Was that is Daniel it, is it Kim Sorensen? Was that your sister? No, no. no? Okay. no. Uh, Why don't we have a comment on that one? That's weird. Yeah. Linda yeah. Oh, Linda, Linda of sister. course. Uh, David Larson Linda, Linda. saying hello to Elijah. We have Daniel Wright saying good afternoon, and uh, Danny is saying hello from Texas. Cool. Uh, by the looks of it. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. We have also have people from Facebook. Well, I didn't pull the Facebook comments because no one ever comments on Facebook. Now the normally. comments are getting out of control. Killing me. We have comments uh, on top of comments. <laughs> Ken's saying Northern California. <laughs> hey, Ken. Uh, yeah. So, actually, maybe a side topic. I didn't aggregate the Facebook comments onto my screen. Lisa's going to look at those. Mm -hmm. Partially because of the way New Blue's social aggregate system works and the way I use multiple profiles in different parts of Chrome makes it really annoying. So, I'm just not... That's not, right. Just not even. <laughs> George takes his privacy very ser seriously. No, no. I don't really. even know if George Herbert is a real name. It's probably not. Probably George it's probably made Boonstra up. or something. No, I uh, probably took that from like a 15th century poet or something. <laughs> right. It's made up. Anyway. Uh, Mr. Kobayashi. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so, so uh, let's get into the news. The news. The, the news. Do you watch, uh, do you watch uh, Grand Tour at all? No. Oh, God. Oh, no, sorry, are we talking about, yeah. like, the, the reboots of... Yeah. Um, Amazon Top yeah, yeah, Gear. Yeah, okay, yeah. 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 They have the Conversation Street segments. They have those cool little, like, shadow box kind of intros. Oh. It's very funny. I anyway, check that out. That's their news segment on that show, and it's always funny. Cause there's hey, always little, little if it's something cool, we can steal it. Exactly. So let's take a look. Uh, anyway, actual news. Um, NAB, you and I are leaving on Saturday. Saturday. That is, like... Whoa, whoa. I still have to pack, uh, I have to do laundry, not necessarily in that order. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just totally lost right now. Everything's a, a mess. <laughs> it, it will be a lot of fun. Please make sure to yeah. swing by booth. Uh, we're at South Upper yes. Hall, booth number 11203. Yes. And of course, if you're using the NAB app, you can add us as one of your favorites. Make sure to check in yep. so we can send you lots of spam. Exactly. Um, at, uh, at NAB this year, if anybody remembers, we had this little contest earlier. Small so contest. Uh, Zoe Akiko is going to be joining us. Yeah. She's actually finishing up on some of her final exams right now. So she took her finals one week early so that she could join Perfect. us in Las Vegas. So that's dedication. That's total dedication. So I'm going to be in touch with her uh, tomorrow. We're going to go over a media awesome. plan. But her and I are going to be running around. We're going to do some shooting with George as well, exploring yeah. the floor and sharing our experience from there. And uh, Akiko is a very accomplished vlogger as well. Yeah, so she'll be documenting her entire trip. Uh, we'll make sure to post some links to her socials on the comments later yeah. or on the description probably because I don't have those ready right now. Yeah, no, it's going to be very cool. We're really looking forward to that. This is a 
an interesting one for us because we've never really done something like that before mm -hmm. uh, at one of these shows. We do a lot of media stuff with you know, traditional journalism, if you will, exactly. um, which is always interesting. Uh, so this will be a little little different. Yeah, it should and, be fun. Uh, we'll see if we're ever going to do it again is, or not. Yeah, it's always fun to, to create content <laughs> as well. Of course, oh, yeah. you're going to have a pocket full of webcasters. Yes, I will. Um, so, so I'm going to be giving away some webcasters on the floor. Mm -hmm. I have enough webcasters to give away one per day, okay. unless I just get lazy and give them all away on Tuesday or ah, something. Ah, come but, on. Spread we'll it see. Out. So <laughs> make sure to follow us on the socials. Keep an eye out. Um, I'll be posting on our Facebook as Where well. Where is kind of do like, Yeah, exactly. Do a little yeah. Facebook takeover. And hopefully I won't get in trouble with yes. security by planning these boxes around. And next week at this time... Thursday at 3 o'clock Eastern, mm -hmm. we will do this show live from NAB. Live from the floor. I don't know where, but somewhere. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to figure it out. <laughs> It'll be the corner with the best uh, LTE access. Yeah, exactly. We're going to be using an LTE wider. access point, probably yeah. throwing it up to StreamShark as well, because that's the easiest way to get the most out of your bandwidth exactly. when you're on location. Split it from the cloud instead of from the source. Exactly. Um, the other thing is that unlike with European shows where we're doing this, you know, when George and I have done it, from Stockholm or from Amsterdam, where it's 9 o'clock at night and we're doing it there. This time, it'll be noon in Vegas when mm -hmm. we're doing it, so we should be a little more awake. <laughs> we're going to have the hangriest though. Uh, no, no, no. We'll eat no. lunch live on the show. Uh, so All right, now, we do have some other news as well. We've got our 4.8 yes. release. Yes, we do. 4.8. Uh, that's going to be coming uh, very shortly, mm -hmm. um, probably uh, somewhere in and around April 26th. Uh, okay, we've got a we've got a firmer date now. Uh, firmer, not not set in stone yet. Firmish. Uh, but to remind people who don't recall, for those Pearl users, Pearl 2 and Pearl Mini, this is going to be a very cool update. Uh, Pearl 2 is going to gain the NDI uh, inputs and outputs, which is awesome, mm -hmm. and Pearl Mini is going to gain. RTSP network sources uh, for inputs from IP cameras, as well as USB camera support. That's a big deal. Um, so That's be yeah, cool. that one's going to be very cool. With USB camera support, would also mean like USB audio stuff. So you could do something like a microphone or like a Blue Yeti, you mm -hmm. know, and, and run a podcast kind of thing. What's the acronym for um, that again? UAVC, UVC and UAC. Yes. UAVC. Yeah. All right. So moving on, our last news item, and if uh, George is a little. Yeah. Gaseous during the show, we can blame it on yeah. National so Burrito I, Day. Possibly just one of those, yeah. Burrito yeah, Day. I <laughs> had a massive burrito for lunch. I am dying over here. The sound check <sighs> consisted mostly of George burping into it the did. microphone. It did. It did. But it was a good good levels because you have that mid range, you've got the low, right? Yeah. You gotta, yeah. Kind of yeah. Ride that good through. test. Good test. All right. So now let's, uh, let's get back into the <laughs> let's get into the meat okay. here. Let's get into the dollars and cents of the matter, uh, and that is actually talking about how to make some money. That's as, right. As someone said in one of our comments, let's yeah, make some money. Exactly. Uh, we're not so making we're any money minis. right right now, but um, we wanted well, to cover... Well, technically, actually, technically we do, well, right? Like, yeah. we're... The I show is sponsored by Epifan, because we shoot it here. That's true. Our salaries That's are true. covered by Epifan. That's true. But uh, obviously, we're in a very unique situation but I, here. I don't get a bonus. <laughs> you don't get a bonus, and there are a lot of content creators. They're out there, they're doing it for free, so they are looking for opportunities. Right. Now, uh, the first one we're going to be looking at, and we are specifically talking about how to get live advertisements, or sorry, how yeah. to get advertisements onto your live stream. Yeah. Now, there are obviously some, some layers to that, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the platform, so we're going to break that down a little bit as well. Totally. I'm just looking at chat here a little bit. Uh, Stefan, hey Stefan, welcome uh, back again. He is hey, I do video work pro bono, so there's no monetizing. Well, you know, maybe uh, it's time to put some dollars in your pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, D. Scott was just saying, you guys ever think about uh, doing the news with a teleprompter? We have. Cameron's a big advocate of that. The yep. teleprompter we currently have uh, wouldn't work very well at the range we have in our studio with the camera setup. So uh, maybe in the future, if we get a better teleprompter for this Yeah, distance. we would have to look at uh, a larger teleprompter as well yeah. as we're going to be looking at expanding our studio in the future. So yeah. it is Stay one Stay tuned of for some for tweaks coming. For sure. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, Stefan just said, can you do a show on the catastrophe of legal changes in Europe? Well, essentially I covered that in my rant last week. Mm -hmm. uh, so go back a week and listen to me yell and rant a little bit. Um, so, yeah, and Stefan's sharing another show idea, how to stream podcasts and so on with a webcaster. Um, yeah, we might do something along those lines mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in the future as, as interesting setups to that. So let's dive into the platforms. Um, so... I think probably the first one, live streaming advertising wise, um, is going to be, you know, the big names are going to be Facebook, YouTube, and so on. That's right. So let's start with Facebook. 
What did you find out about Facebook? So uh, Facebook seems to be one of the easier ones to get into. Like relatively speaking, it's one of the easier Depending ones. Depending on where you live. That's right. <laughs> so uh, like everything else that's great, it's usually only available in the US of A. Yeah. So uh, fortunately for our cousins down south, they will have access to the service. Yeah. Now in order to get, um, uh, to insert these ads into your live stream, you are looking at having a page with about 50,000 followers. 50,000. 50,000, but that's again, I feel like that's a, it's more attainable in some ways than some right. of the other but games that we looked at. 300 or more concurrent viewers on a recent live video. Well, that's on a recent live video. But that's a struggle on Facebook. Okay. It doesn't get high concurrent numbers in my experience for even pages that have 50,000 viewers. Well, and something that obviously that they're really trying to do is make sure that their advertisers are getting a good value out Absolutely. of this. Absolutely, yeah. So if you're just giving it away to every Tom, Dick, and Harry, then you're going to get a lot of funky for sure. funky content, potentially with ads that could be running against something that's not. Exactly. Uh, maybe not super popular, or how can you say, like, not politically correct? Right. It's got to be live for at least four minutes before you can run the first ad. That's right. And then there's a minimum of five minutes between commercial breaks. That's correct. So then that's where I said the new boss is kind of like the old boss. I think as we're coming full circle with this, we're starting right. to see going that. Going right back to old TV style. Exactly. We're looking right. at these old broadcast rules. You're going to have specific gates. Commercials are going to be a certain amount of time. Yeah, exactly. Yada, yada. And that's, you know, that one's kind of weird. Um, so for anyone outside of the U.S. who's thinking about monetizing Facebook live streams, forget about it for now. There's probably some... <laughs> tax policy involved, to be honest. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, um, where are the advertisers based, right? And they want to make sure that they're advertising to their largest, exactly. uh, largest viewer base, which is going to be the United States. Absolutely. So another popular one um, that is a good alternative, and we bring it up every now and then, mm -hmm. and is, is Twitch. Yeah. Um, Twitch obviously has the reputation of being primarily a gaming platform, and it certainly is by content type. But there's no restriction to that. There's categories you can do other content on it. I think one of the interesting parts is that Twitch has done a multi-tiered level of ways to make money. That's right. In the context of running ads, though, you have to be the top tier, the second tier. That's right. So the first tier is affiliates. And this is the details yeah. way up on the screen now. So, so as you graduate from affiliates, you have to meet all of these criteria first. Right. So you can start from nobody. You have to meet these to become an affiliate, mm -hmm. which allows you to get subscribers, which is paid on Twitch, and you get a cut of that. Um, it's usually 50-50 with Twitch. That's very generous. Um, I feel like that's a really good cut. Well, it's five bucks a month to the subscriber, mm -hmm. and you're getting a 50% cut of that. Yeah. So that's, you know, if you're getting a few thousand subs, that's not bad. It's not bad. And I would say out of all the platforms I looked at, this is definitely the lowest gate. For so sure. So if you're going to be getting into this, this is where you want to start. Yeah. And obviously, like, online uh, esports is going to be right. so big. And, like, it's just kind, right. of, it's so just kind of ramping up. Their right gate is primarily around consistency, mm -hmm. which is important. And we've mentioned that on this show when people say, how do you grow a channel? How do you do that? It's all about consistency. That's right. You've got to have the content and it be there consistently the same time, same days, you know, whatever the case may be. So theirs is based around that. Stream at least seven days in the last 30 days. Receive an average of three viewers per stream. So that's I mean, not, that's not a lot. You could view bot by using your family and mm -hmm. get that pretty easily, uh, and then try to grow your audience to fifty followers. Followers is on Twitch is essentially just likes, right? That's cool. just someone saying, "I want a notification when this person goes live." So that's not even a paid thing. That's just like people, you know, following you on Twitter, basically. It's and a, it's a, another relatively easy gate or exactly. easy bar to get I mean, past. Yeah, you, could, you, could, you, you should be able to find 50 family and friends to do that. Um, <laughs> There's the one guy watching and he's like, oh, no. Well, exactly. And then on, even on top of that, if you want subscribers out of that, maybe I shouldn't say this, but if you link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch Prime, People can subscribe to you monthly for free, but you get the cut. Bundle and save. You get the cut, guys. You get All right, the so cut. what's what's the anyway. next level above our, our Twitch <laughs> If you hit program. these markers, then you get to Twitch Partner. This is where it gets well, you, more challenging. Well, you have the opportunity to maybe yeah. become a Twitch maybe. Partner. Maybe. This, this is where it gets tricky. That's right. So one of the things, obviously, we learned about the Twitch partners is that you can get yourself set up. You can qualify for it. Right. You can reach out to them and you can say, hey, I'm ready. But right. there is no specific set of criteria that's no. going to automatically unlock this achievement. No, it's right? invite like only. You are going to be invite only. If you, yeah. are, if you are on the top of your game, if you are just mm -hmm. like satisfying all of your viewers, hitting exactly. all of these gates, then they would consider yeah. So if they like your point. content, you're being consistent. Uh, you're not violating community rules, mm -hmm. which there are a lot on Twitch, uh, make no mistake. 
um, then you get the option of if they invite you to become a partner. When you do that, you get potentially a bigger cut of your subscribers, mm -hmm. which is nice. So it's more like a 70-30 split instead of 50-50. And you get to run commercials in your streams. Cool. That's triggered by the creator. They basically have a button in their dashboard. They could just click it to start uh, an ad. There's options for whether you want 30-second ads all the way up to three-minute ads and in between. Um, and they're similar to Facebook. There are some rules. You can't do it uh, more often than every eight minutes, I think it is. So you can't just um, sit there and mash no. the ad button? Well, you used to be able to, okay. but they changed that because some creators were abusing it horrendously. Uh, and that's not good for building community. You're going to lose all your subscribers. Twitch right? is very community focused, mm -hmm. so um, they're, they're trying to balance that out. Um, so there is options there, but that final leap to run those ads is, uh, is hard. The funny thing is, from what I've read, is that even running those ads may not be as lucrative as just getting subscribers. Hmm. So Okay, well, you kind of have to balance it out and see where you're at. Yeah. Exactly. Now, um, obviously, speaking of putting on ads, there's going to be some specific rules that you want to yes. follow. Or rules or guidelines, right? So, yeah. you know, a few tips to consider before you break for that commercial. You want to make sure that your viewers are engaged, right? So they know that you're going to be coming up on a commercial break. Yes. You're going to be explaining, you know, just a quick explanation. You don't have to spend as much time as we're going to explain right now. Yeah. That you're going to be going into the break before you actually do it. That's way that way it's not really sudden, because well, yeah, exactly. obviously when and you're watching videos and that inline ad comes up, it's usually like right in the middle of a sentence right. or, or something, right? And if these are full screen ones, like the way Twitch runs, for example, someone is losing whatever's live in that ad break, right? They're yeah. seeing that ad instead of what you're doing. So probably not a good idea to run an ad at like the cliffhanger moment of your stream, right? <laughs> so you can, or is, is it? Well, or is uh, it? I right? mean, it's, again, if you want to learn about to... that listeria contamination <laughs> in a community here yeah, near yeah. you, stay <laughs> tuned. But I think it's probably, there is some forethought and planning that needs mm -hmm. to go into when you're going to trigger these ads. Um, when they are manually triggered. Totally. Um, and yeah, and make sure that, that people you know, bring it back around. Like you said, going back to the old school style television right. setup, you know, there was always a, an intentional script break for ads. Exactly. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, Speaking dun, of which, dun. we're actually just going to take a quick commercial break and, and now uh, word from our sponsor. And now a word from our only sponsor. Perrier. And you have 30 seconds, George. Epifen Video Gear. Did you know that Epifen Video makes live streaming and recording equipment? We do. This is Epifen Video Gear. And it's great for live streaming and recording. And this is my office, uh, which is covered in beautiful uh, Epifen Video banners. And you can come see us at NAB next week, where we'll be showing off our Epifen Video live streaming gear. And I only prepared about 14 seconds of content. So <laughs> this commercial might end early. Early. <laughs> <laughs> Early. Uh, All right. Uh, and that was great. Obviously, yeah. um, I should explain, we don't meet any of the qualifications no. to do uh, advertising <laughs> no. during a live stream. So we did no. do that commercial manually, which will kind of take yes. us back to one of our last points before we leave out. Right. But, but so. also, to be fair, I'm not sure that we would ever monetize this show, even if we could, simply because we are a company. Yeah, that's true. Right. That's true. I mean, unless I could take it and put it into gear. We're not trying to make money from this show. That's right in terms of advertising. You know, we're trying to be open and transparent with it as well. This is advertising for ourselves, mm -hmm. just this show. So, um, well, and, and one but, thing I have noticed, because there are a few a few guys that do daily show or weekly shows like this, and they do have monetization turned on yeah. for some of their VODs. Right. And I have seen competitors' products being advertised on those VODs exactly. for your video. So for us, you specifically, don't you don't really want to have an ad for no. a competitor's product on there. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people were complaining that they couldn't hear George's ad, that the audio was too low or just wasn't there. So uh, so that's great. We'll uh, talk to our sponsors about getting us a better microphone. Yeah, yeah we'll have to <laughs> complain about that and tell them they uh, need to run their ad clips better. Yeah, don't uh, worry, Elijah, you didn't, mention, you didn't miss anything. Yeah. And uh, Marco said earlier, uh, what app are we using? Uh, if you mean to run the live stream, we don't. We use our own. Epifan hardware that George was just <laughs> advertising. Right. Uh, in this show, we use the Pearl 2. 
if you mean for our comments, we're mm. using New Blue FX. It's um, a new blue, new blue Titler, Titler Live, Live yeah. which new blue, blue, blue. aggregates the comments from Facebook and uh, YouTube. And then I get a list of them here. I can promote those. It's then sending it over NDI to uh, our Perl 2. Well, today we're using HDMI, but it could be other options. <laughs> That's right. Uh, NDI is an option, HDMI with, uh, we're using yeah. HDMI with a chroma. Yes. So, so if we have anyone with a blue avatar that comes up, we're just yeah, not going to exactly. see it. Exactly. It comes out. And the Blue so, Man Group, they don't comment on us anyway, so yeah. that's fine. Um, so. All right, what's next? That's what we do. So what's next uh, would be <laughs> the big one. The big one. The big guy. The big the, guy. The big guy in the room. It's YouTube. Yeah. YouTube the Live. Yeah. And it is like, these guys have made it really challenging to do any kind of monetization. Well, and this that was, comes out of the adpocalypse. Right? Yeah, It's exactly. kind of going back two years now. Uh, so for any of you who don't remember, uh, there was a little bit of controversy with um, some large channels doing some sketchy things mm -hmm. and advertisers freaked out and yelled at Google slash YouTube and said, we don't want our stuff being advertised on this type of content. And it's justifiable, right? Like, Absolutely. Back to traditional broadcast. You buy con you buy advertising based on the specific content, exactly. and with YouTube, the way it was set up before it was, it was kind of this, this roulette wheel. You don't yeah. know where your ads are going to land, and da, exactly. da, 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 the, the creator could Japanese choose forest. certain categories. You could say, as a creator, I want cars or I mm -hmm. want whatever, but the the advertisers didn't really get much say in the matter, so it wasn't great for that. Um, so the advertisers at first basically said, we're just not advertising anymore. Mm -hmm. And so some of the names were like Coca-Cola, Samsung, like major advertisers. Yeah, these aren't, they're not chipping in 10 or 15 grand for advertising, exactly. right? So these are big, big, big pockets there. It was kind of a big deal. One of the things that YouTube did as part of that was increase their monetization threshold. Mm -hmm. This monetization threshold applies to both VOD posts and live streams. You have to meet these criteria for both and then you can start playing with the different features. So, and that's where it's easier to understand with YouTube because it's clear basically you have to qualify for monetization. Yeah. Now that is a pretty high gate, so that it involves is. having over 4,000 public watch hours within the last 12 months. That's a big deal, it and is. there's actually some instructionals online where you can learn about how to increase your, your watch time. Fake, it's, it, it's, fake it till you make yeah, it. Yeah, kind of fake it till you make <laughs> it, but it's really basically just having a lot of content. Right. So you have a lot of content that's solid, and a lot of that content needs to hold up to those community standards, which is another one of these gates. Yeah. So making sure that you're actually producing quality content. Yeah. You need to have more than 1,000 uh, subscribers, subscribers, which yeah. again, that's not, that's not, not super e high. But it's not easy either. It's not easy. It's not easy. We, we have quite a few thousand, but it's not something that came right. overnight. No, exactly. You have to earn that. And then in addition, you have to have an AdSense account. Mm -hmm. AdSense has its own criteria. Things like, you know, being legally an adult. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's uh, kind of a big deal. Giving them tax information so they can tax you appropriately, uh, and some various other things. So get that Google T4 in the mail. Yeah, exactly. Um, so there's a number of different things here. Um, I think, you know, part of that is a lot of people think maybe live stream revenue is free money. No, it's income like anything else. You're going to have to claim it on your taxes. Sorry. Um, so, Although I do miss that $50 check I would get every year from my white elephant instructional video that I had. Oh, yeah. That's got a lot of views then. Oh, yeah. Bucks. I got like Ooh. hundreds of thousands of views on there. And it was like the Mar Mariah Carey yeah. uh, Merry Christmas song. It's only really see interest in So like, I didn't throw it in here because it just came, came to mind. But a British guy just uh, a few days ago, last week, posted a video talking about how much you make from YouTube, you know, that's normally something you're not allowed to really talk about. Hmm. It's technically a violation of the TOS. With, Actually. But he did it anyways. Okay. Uh, and he broke it down. And this is a guy who has, I think, 35,000 subscribers, and he has a few videos that have hit like a million views okay. that have gone some semi-viral. And he was breaking down the fact that, you know, his consistent views based on a subscriber count, he might make, even with one video out of a month going to a million, he might make five, six hundred bucks a month. Hmm. It's not a job. <laughs> well, and it really just depends, right? But that's, yeah. that, that could be the same for amateur sports, uh, you know, an actor Absolutely. that maybe hasn't quite yeah. hit their peak yet, because there are folks that are making quite a nice income. Uh, obviously, we've um, you know we've we've encountered a few of these individuals. We know these guys. We know that they're doing well. They may still have a day job, yeah. but uh, it's something that they're focusing on quite a bit. They may even walk on all fours as well. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Now, um, so we've talked about our big guys. Now, there are a few that aren't 
uh, you can't actually do any kind of monetization on. So yeah. who are we talking about there? So, well, first let's look at the, f the big one that we get questions about all the time, especially in relation to products like the webcaster, mm. is Instagram. Uh, Doing it for the gram. Instagram does have live streaming, but it is only from the smartphone app. Mm -hmm. It does not technically accept custom RTMP streams from third-party encoders like it. Webcaster or Pearls. Mm -hmm. Um, there are some sketchy ways of hacking it, but I, it's not really worth the effort. Um, and they don't offer any monetization. Yeah. So unless you're an Instagram model, you're probably not going to make any money streaming on Instagram. Well, and right um, now, Instagram has definitely found its its stride in being an advertising platform. Yes. Right. So if you're on, if you're looking at the live, you're laying in bed, you're just watching that that uh, story feed going by, you're going to yeah. see those ads pop up. The posts and themselves are the ads. Yeah. The, yeah. And they're trying to like we know Instagram slash Facebook because newsflash, Facebook owns Instagram. What? Uh, <laughs> so but when the I next quit Facebook someone... and I protested, I was still on Instagram. Yeah funny um, but they head. they have plans of putting you know buy buttons into posts and stuff like that mm -hmm. they're they're going it's already in, there yeah, yeah they're going a there. different direction for monetization yeah. than we see in other platforms um, the other one would be Vimeo live mm -hmm. um, now the reason for that is Vimeo live is a paid service you the creator pay Vimeo to host the content so there isn't any monetization coming back to you because you're choosing to pay them to host it. That's right. They're not going to give that money back to you. Right. On the flip side, there are options within Vimeo to create paywalls. That's right. So you can charge viewers to log in to view the content to begin with. So again, that's only going to work if it's a well-established setup or maybe it's a particular piece of content like a webinar that people are going to pay for. You know, maybe if you're Tony Robbins, that might work, right? I mean, a virtual, you know, who's the slap, like the slap that. chop guy? Uh, yeah, so the slap choppy thing. So you're not going to get ad revenue from platforms like that. Um, One of the things I should mention too uh, that we didn't go over with YouTube, if you're talking about embedding a video, uh, you will not be able to. Uh, qualify for monetization right. if your video is embedded. Right. Because they want you on YouTube's website. Yes. It's the same reason why you're not going to be able to monetize a mobile video. Right. Like for one thing, you're not going to be able to actually control when that ad is popping up because you don't have the so live control room. Because yeah. you do drop those ads in using their live control room. And when you're on their uh, desktop, they're going to be feeding other ads. So there's yeah. going to be overlays, they've got the sidebar as well. And yeah. that's, uh, that's something you're not going to Because YouTube makes money off of advertising, and they only make a bunch of money off of advertising by keeping you there and making you dive down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. So works better on, uh, on non-embedded Do you know <laughs> that the world is flat? We have to get oh, into that later. Oh, jeez. watched all these Let's YouTube videos. Let's get back videos. to uh, some of these excellent, yeah, uh, totally excellent true. things. Um, oh, you want to you jump on the comments? Well, I'm just going to look at a couple of them here. So Kim is just saying, um, is New Blue Social Package the one we use? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. So this uh, this one is the Titler Live. Okay. So it is actually embedded in the app. Uh, New Blue also supports some functionality with After Effects. So if yeah. you're more familiar with building your graphics in After Effects, you can port those over into New Blue. Uh, we are planning on doing a, a little bit of a collab with New Blue in the future so we can talk about... Uh, you know, their yeah, apps, kind of where stuff. they're going. We'll be connecting with them in a future episode. The other one, D. Scott was saying, uh, so if I make and upload an ad for a customer, can I just bypass some of the rules concerning ads? Um, you would basically have to do what we just did, where you cut into something. Mm -hmm. um, in that situation, YouTube doesn't know that you're running an ad because it's just the same content to them. Um, so if you have your own sponsor that wants an advertising break in the content you're creating, yeah, I mean, you could run a video package or a clip or something like that, and it, it has absolutely nothing to do with the platform. Well, and that's, uh, that's a great point, uh, D. Scott, and it kind of rolls into our last bit about other sources. Yeah. So if you're not qualifying for this, then you could physically cut away to yes. a commercial that you're going to embed. You can have products inside your stream or inside mm -hmm. your show. You can talk about a product while you're doing the show. Yeah. Uh, you know, something we're seeing really often now with YouTube creators is that they're just saying, hey, this uh, episode is brought to you by yeah. this VPN service. Exactly. Right? And they push that right at the beginning. So we're getting these like product insertions it's that usually, again, yeah. we saw when Vikings War Clans or some <laughs> other mobile game from well, some Chinese company. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. It, right? but, we, we saw yeah. this like kind of kick off in the was it the 40s and the 50s where they had 
advertisements yeah. in radio shows. Right. So like the actors Rocky, would be talking Rubai. about the show. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then they would change gears and then go right into this product ad. Yeah. And then we saw rules around how you could advertise, when yeah. you could put you know, a cigarette advertisement yeah, in yeah, or background sponsorships for sure. Um, the other way of product course, placement. I'm sorry, yeah, George. Product so placement. Stuff. I was looking for. Um, the other stuff would be direct donations. Um, you know, again, we mentioned here super chat. That's a function of uh, YouTube live chat, but you have to still meet that criteria for monetizing in order mm -hmm. to enable super chat. Um, if we go back to Twitch for a second, Twitch affiliates, the base level, um, people can donate through bits, which is Twitch's own tip jar currency. Yeah, it's their currency. Uh, so people buy bits in real cash from Amazon, essentially, and then you can use the virtual bits to tip the content creator in their own choosing of a dom denomination. Um, so even as an affiliate, even without being able to run ads, there's a built-in system for, for you, Twitch affiliates to make a few bucks through, uh, through the tip jar, if Do you the will. bits have, like, and kind of as you're going through, I'm thinking of, like, currencies and stuff. Mm -hmm. Do bits have any linked value based on when they're purchased? Yes. Okay. So you could like, could you buy bit futures? Uh, no, I don't think so. We're no. not there yet. No, no, I don't okay. believe so. Uh, and I think the split on it's not great. So it's not a big payday. Mm. Um, most Twitch creators actually will run their own separate private donation thing. Gotcha. Same way YouTubers will often run their own separate private Patreon or some other system in parallel. Um, so that they don't have to worry about that. One of the functions that I did see in the new blue titler is that when you get a donation, it can actually have a live feed. It'll just pop right. up exactly. right on the screen. Yeah. And the same thing with new subscribers. Yeah. Or if one of your super chat members makes a comment, it'll put it right up on the screen for you. Yeah. Um, so Danny Drizzle, Grizzle, sorry, was uh, was also saying uh, new blue social requires NDI Pearl two only. Um, so. We're actually using a, an HDMI feed today, mm -hmm. um, but it does support NDI. And if you are going to use NDI, when NDI comes to Perl 2, it is going to be a Perl 2 feature only. Perl Mini won't support NDI. Um, so um, NDI is pretty resource intensive. <laughs> it's, it's a hefty load. Uh, yeah, um, it is. So. And we'll have some more details around the actual NDI release when we get closer to 4.8. Let me tell you the experiments we ran with the uh, NDI mobile app on iOS and Android. Horrible. Mm -hmm. It's it's resource intensive. Well, and a lot could be said <laughs> about the Wi-Fi network as well. Yeah. So if yeah. you have like, you just have to be kind of tip top for all of these right. different things to line up. But NDI in general is a great service, and it's going to add a lot of uh, a lot of power to a lot of setups. Absolutely. And also just limit the amount of cables you're going to have running around your studio. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, so, I mean, that pretty much covers it. Hopefully, if anyone has any questions about monetizing live streams, um, please throw them in there in chat. We'll, uh, we'll try and check them out quickly. Um, but that's sort of the quick rundown. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully that gives you some insight into choosing a platform that you think uh, will fit your needs the best in terms of being able to monetize and get a few bucks back. Um, right. Of course, like any business, any dollars you do get, if you, the, you for the first while, if you immediately flip it back in to, uh, to you know, upgrades or whatever, um, then hopefully that will snowball into growing your channel and, totally. and you, can, you can really grow and hit these other numbers. Well, and something uh, so. that we've said before, as I'm kind of looking at the screen, I think we're a little bit soft, <laughs> the, uh, the, ga or the, uh, the acceptance for lower quality is yeah. getting lower and lower. So the more money you put back into your production, the better camera you get, the better lights, the better audio, right? You're just going to up your production game. Yeah. That's going to pay itself back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. In theory. In theory. In theory. In, unless you screw up the audio like our advertiser <laughs> did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I can't wait to drop that advertiser. <laughs> yeah. No, wait, that, that doesn't guy, make sense. Yeah, yeah that I'm guy's right. terrible. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Daniel's just saying he's doing NDI with a Mimo Live upstream to Pearl Mini. Uh, yeah, we haven't played with the Mimo Live stuff, so uh, be interesting to hear more about that. Okay, Danny. And actually, Danny, if you have some like links or examples, feel, uh, feel free to throw them onto the yeah, chat yeah, or for sure. send us a message as well. We're info at epifan.com, and we'd love to see uh, yeah. what, you're, what you're working on. Always interested in the ways. One of the reasons we're excited about adding NDI to Perl 2 is to find out all the interesting ways that people are going to use it uh, for different workflows. So uh, we're kind of looking forward to that. Um, I'm not very creative. I can only think of you know a couple of ways. 
Or to use NDI. Yeah, well, especially because the mobile app is such trash that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's safe to say George wasn't entirely happy with that. No. I was also pretty disappointed. We were planning on doing like a mobile segment with oh, that. It was going to be so cool mm. on paper. It looked awesome until we actually ran and went, oh my goodness. Well, I've definitely seen better performance from the Wirecast gear setup. Yeah, so, I mean, arguably, it's the same kind of thing. It's just yeah. video over IP. And well, even the, the other boxes, like we have some of the, the hardware boxes that'll take HDMI to NDI, those work way better. Mm -hmm. It's just an app thing on, on Android and iOS. Is yeah, it's the processor. Maybe we had too many apps yeah. open on the phone or the device, or yeah, it's an older it one, but yeah, the, the functionality itself wasn't too yeah. great. The one built for OBS that also puts NDI worked better, and it still had problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, so, I think that pretty much wraps it yeah. up for today. That wraps it so. up. We're going to do a short episode today so we can get back to getting ready for NAB next yeah. week. But yeah. if you are going to be in Las Vegas, please make sure to check us out. And of course, next week's episode, we're going to be doing it live from the floor. Yeah, and hopefully we're going to bring you some super cool stuff that we find at NAB this year. And uh, I want to do that Bolt camera. You know, we're like, we'll strike a cool pose and then the Bolt camera. You know the Bolt camera, right? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, All right, well, anyone that's in the know <laughs> on the chat or is watching right now. All these weird video no, nerds. So, so what they've done is they've put a camera on the end of one of those robotic arms. Okay. Like, you know, the one yeah, you yeah, use yeah, to, like, yeah. make yeah. welds on a car. Yeah. They're taking all the jobs out of, like, yeah, Minneapolis. Yeah. So they're going to yeah. take Automating all the camera operators' yeah. jobs, too. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It, they can create these awesome effects where you're shooting at, like, 120 frames per second. Uh, okay. You swing the camera around 180 degrees. Can create these really cool, really cool effects. But Interesting. I'd like to do that. We'll probably, um, I'll probably wait in line for an hour or two to, to get access yeah, to that one. Yeah, exactly. It'll be fun. Yeah. So that'll do it for now. People saying Thank thanks in the well. chat. So thanks everyone for joining us. Really appreciate it as always. And uh, we'll see you next week with the cool news from NAB. And uh, that'll do it. I'm George. I'm Cameron. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. See you next week.